Okay, um, now I'm going to do problem number three from problem set 12-1. Um, and this one's actually kind of the neatest problem. So the first thing I need to do is uh, define complex numbers. So I'm going to do cosine of pi over 4. Copy that. Plus pi times sine of pi over 4. Um, so that's what we're starting with. That's z sub zero. Uh, that's z sub zero, actually. I mean, according to the the problem. So I could have named it that, but I didn't, and I don't want to go back and change it. Uh, then what I'm supposed to do is name w. W is uh, one point one, and then cosine of pi over six plus i times sine of pi over six. Copying and pasting is a good way to go with these sorts of things. So there. And now what I'm supposed to do is um, I'm supposed to calculate a new z value by taking z sub 0 and uh, multiplying it by w raised to a certain power. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, well, I mean, I could just do that. I could do uh, z times w like that. W squared and get that, uh, but that's kind of annoying, so I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is make a sequence. So what you do is you type sequence. Actually, if you type SEQ, you'll be able to see, you can't see it here, uh, three options pop up, and you want the one that says uh, expression, variable, start value, end value. And I'm going to press enter and it's going to pop up here. Okay, so now the expression that I want to enter is Z times W to the N. Okay, now there's only one variable in that expression, and that's n. And what I want to do in this sequence is I want n to start at 0, according to the problem, and I want it to end at 12. And then when I press enter, what it's going to do is it's going to generate the sequence. It's going to do what we would have done 12 times, uh, 13 times, I guess. So uh, we get that. If you look, it's kind of interesting what's on the screen here. Um, so it looks kind of like a spiral. So we can move w around. We shouldn't move w around because it's supposed to be fixed, but I'm going to move it around to play with it. Um, and you can actually move z around too. And there's a, something we can do. It's a neat little trick here. Let me, let me do this, um, and I'm going to call this k. And I'm going to have it go from... Uh, 0 to 30, and an increment of 1. And then I'm going to come over here to list 1 and double click it, and change this to K, and click Apply, and OK. And uh, what happened now is that uh, my list that I can see is two items long. It's, it's evaluating at K equals 0, and then K equals 1. But with it set up like this, what I can do is click here and watch it spiral, which is kind of neat. Uh, you can use sequences for all sorts of things. Uh, and then you can play around with, you know, if you move them, you can get a tighter spiral. If you make them equal-ish, I don't know if that's like a more visually pleasing spiral, uh, whatever. Um, mostly I just wanted you to see the spiral, actually, in this problem. Uh, but there is stuff going on with the, uh, the absolute values of these, their distance from zero and the, their angle. So you should go ahead and, and figure those things out. But it's really the spiral that's just cool that I wanted you to see. So um, try to create it on your own, uh, or you can download my file and play around with it. Uh, either way, uh, good luck, and I hope you uh, find it interesting.